Good evening, everybody. Welcome in. So glad you could be here tonight. Oh, I'm excited. This is a big retro adventure Wednesday. It's me, Jess, Decap Jedi. Glad to see some first time people uh, dropping in. I know that we're all hyped for King's Quest VI. I know I am. So good to see some of y'all dropping in for the first time. Yankee Gal, thank you so much for the sub earlier. Welcome in, everybody. Hope you're having a terrific Wednesday so far. It's been a fun one here. I've uh, been, uh, been excited all day about jumping into King's Quest VI. Uh, it's also uh, an exciting day for the whole family around here. My daughter is uh, off on her first ever sleepover. So, I mean, there is a greater than zero chance. <laughs> hey, thank you, Clil, for the, for the resub. I appreciate it. There is a, a greater than zero chance my daughter may text me any minute to come pick her up from the sleepover she's at. So... Who knows how this whole thing could go. Uh, but uh, yeah, instead of a sleepover, we're all partying with our old pal, uh, Alexander, or Gwydion as I like to call him, as we jump into King's Quest VI. Now, <clears throat> most of y'all know this. Uh, you're, uh, a lot of y'all have been sticking around with me uh, for a while here. I'm a big Sierra head. You know, I was playing these games going all the way back to Gosh, 1986, uh, when I was uh, just a, a wee, a wee little adventure gamer, and uh, have loved Sierra games uh, for most of my life now. Uh, really had a transformative effect on my life in a lot of ways, in a very nerdy way. But King's Quest VI is somehow a Sierra game that I never managed to play. I've played almost all the other adventure games Sierra released along the way. And somehow, uh, King's Quest VI just never happened. I played uh, all the other King's Quests, and the one that most people think is the best one, somehow I missed. I didn't avoid it just because I was being a jerk and not wanting to uh, play the one that everyone loves. I just somehow never got around to it. So tonight is me finally getting around to it. Uh, so good to see you. Hey, I'm Zizzy. Hey, Susu Rocket. Great to see you. I know, it's wild. Uh, I'm very excited for this one. Good to see everybody. Hey, Such Minutia, uh, Galax Quest, there's Grundy, Red Wing, Mike Clam. That's right, we're going to be talking about hair curlers and straighteners tonight, along with <laughs> along with Keith Quest 6, David Alexander. Oh gosh, too many folks here to mention tonight, but I'm very grateful for all of you dropping by. So uh, I say we just jump into the game, right? There we go. All right, here we are. Ready to play a little bit of King's Quest VI. Let's do this thing. Okay, first of all, this is copyrighted, so nobody try to steal this game while we're playing it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate any sort of input like that, Yankee Gal. I'm not too worried about spoilers and things. Hey, it's Booze Clues. Thank you, Average Goon. Hey, Throat uh, Genji, good to see you. I haven't read the manual. Oh, no. Should I have read the manual? I should have read the manual. Oh, wow. MZZ, you haven't played this one either. What? What's wrong with us? How have we both missed this? Let's see the opening. I hear this is a Hollywood quality cartoon that we're about to see. Hey, I'm a little deep hat. That's right, this is King's Quest. One of Sierra's classic quest games. Mm. This is a Hollywood quality cartoon. Alexander, here you are. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? 
I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. Wow. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. Hey, Jakobin. Good to see you. Welcome in, everybody. So glad to see all of you. Despite his family's concern, Alexander remains tormented by thoughts of Cosima. Tormented. Oh, we're going to pan through that chandelier. Oh, baby, here we go. Swoop that camera. Swoop. Here we go. And Q mirror. Or a girl in a tower. Alexander, I feel so alone. I don't know what to do. Alexander, I wish you were here. Kasima, wait! Mother! Mother, come quick! Here we go. Those are King's Quest flutes if I've ever heard them. Alexander, what on earth? <gasps> You're white as a ghost. Mother, I saw Cosima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. And it showed <laughs> me how to find that her. That checks out. How? The stars. I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. Yes, the magic mare. Three long months, Prince Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. Yeah, I believe we start to see, you know... King's Quest, as the series goes on, really leaning more and more into its Disney inspirations. You really see it by King's Quest Seven, which I love. I, I'm a King's Quest Seven defender. This is great. This will blow my mind in, what, 1992? Seagull not, in fact, courtesy of Lou. <laughs> wow, look at Alexander doing his thing. It's a great soundtrack. You really can see where Sierra was putting money into its King's Quest sequels. Hey, Purple Tentacle. Great to see you. Welcome, man. Part with the seagulls took so long, I always bore you. <laughs> Hey, Winter, good to see you. Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! <laughs> Man, look at his pirate crew. Those guys are great. Hey, Danilog. Hours pass. A 
the pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the seas. Uh-oh. Those sound like sinister flutes. As the ship nears the shore, days turn to night, and the sea turns violent. Sinister flutes are the worst. Ah, beans. We're headed for a shipwreck. Can feel it. Sinister Flutes, your favorite Jethro Tull cover band. Ah, beans. We sunk our ding dang ship. Sorry, it's got me. It's got rain. Thank you, Forte. I'm going to shout out here to Forte801. Thank you for the raid. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, this is the quickest I've ever died in a uh, King's Quest game. Written and designed by Roberta Williams and Jane Jensen. Jane Jensen, of course, famous for the Gabriel Knight series. So what retro game were you playing tonight, Forte? Welcome in. Jane Jensen, co-creator, Police Quest 3. Was that Jane Jensen or was that... Was Tammy Dargan on Police Quest 3 or am I misremembering? Police Quest 3, one of the top three police quests. Oh, Tammy was Police Quest 4 and SWAT. Okay. Ooh, Space Quest 3 speedrun attempts. How are you doing with it? Russell, true love. Sounds like someone who would make a game about a girl in a tower. Play the hot new song of the summer, Girl in the Tower. I mean, there's a Girl in the Tower sticker just waiting to be slapped. Man, we ran out of music before we ran out of team members. I feel like Quality Assurance should have dealt with that. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Oh, that's fantastic. Then Such minutia. Does remember the shipwreck the sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. <laughs> yeah, they probably just, uh, yeah, they crossed that vast sea. I bet their lifeboat made it all the way back to Devontree. My job is beach. Um, how long has he been there? Two days. You know, such minutia, you mentioned picking up a copy of this and it still had the, uh, call and request girl in the tower, the hot new song of the summer. Um, I've actually been eyeing uh, copies of King's Quest VI on eBay recently, and I'd really like mine to include that, too. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. All right, perfect. I can prove to people that I'm landed gentry now. 
That's important to me. The remains of Alexander's sailing ship lie dashed upon the distant shore. Does that mean there are physical copies of Girl in the Tower floating around? There must be, right? A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. The sand is... Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Hey, Ben, good to see you. Moving out here scoring points. Alexander's treasure box lies partially buried in the sand. It must have washed ashore with the other ship debris. It's a lock box. Sweet. What we got down there? There's a copper coin in the treasure box. The coin bears the seal of Devontree and King Graham's noble face. You think Graham would have kept Edward's face on that as a show of respect, but I guess not. I guess uh, Alexander as soon takes as the he, coin uh, and leaves the ruined box where it is. So I'm just preparing the ship. The ship is ruined. It has nothing further to offer Alexander. You're a ruined ship. The ocean appears calm, but there's a dimpling pattern to the surface which indicates an undertow. One of the things that bums me in some of Sierra's uh, early uh, SCI games, or SCI 1 games, the point-and-click games, is that uh, they don't the accept... Ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. They don't accept F5 to save. You actually have to go into the uh, menu. The underwater toe is amazingly strong. Before Alexander can retreat, the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. Ah, oh, beans. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third I like this narrator, time, yeah. he finds himself wishing. <laughs> Thank you for the Jim Wall sticker. He'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Oh wow! Tickets only. Next. Tickets only. Nothing like getting swept off your feet. All right, well, that's not the way to proceed. Let's maybe try up the path here. Ooh. Alexander examines the tree's hollow, but finds nothing of interest. Sarah, I have not played this before. This, I take that back. I've played like these, like four screens, the beach, this screen, and those two screens. And that is my extent of ever having played King's Quest VI. Alexander promises himself that he will not go home until he has determined what Cosima's feelings are for him and if she needs his help. Great. I will leave you alone if you just explain your feelings to me, says Alexander. Ooh. Donkey boys. Forte, I'm playing in Scum VM, which I think actually this game appears to support both in whatever version I'm playing. Or try to in your prints. The bushes are too prickly to reply. Ha <laughs> ha. There is no one in the guard hut with whom to communicate. Alexander politely addresses the odd looking guards at the castle doors, hoping hey, one to short, I can see you. predicament. Good day to you, guards. I was cast upon this island in a storm, and I'm a little confused about my location. Could you tell me what place this is and who lives in this castle? Hey, what is that you say? A castaway? A likely story. We haven't had any foreigners in this part since El Hazaret arrived. Ah, don't be so rude, Gruff. Ah. not asking for any secrets. You're standing on the Isle of the Crown, lad, mm. and this is the Castle of the Crown. The royal family resides here. Uh, rather, 
what's left of the royal family. The Isle of the Crown. But tell me, am I anywhere near the land of the Green Isles? This is the land of the Green Isles. The Isle of the Crown is the main island, foolish boy. Like Hawaii. Then Princess Cosima must live in this very castle. Aye, the princess is indeed our treasure jewel to God, and we consider it an honor. Yeah, absolutely. Susu Rocket pointed out that uh, One Short Eyes speedrun documentaries are amazing. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, go on YouTube, search for One Short Eye. Uh, lots of great documentaries about the history of speedrunning uh, games, particularly Sierra games. I find them really fascinated to see how those times and tricks have evolved over time. But also M. Zizzy, you mentioned, guy who met you once it <laughs> has a dream about you risk his life to stalk you and ask if you love him. Yeah, this is before the internet, so that's even uh, even more impressive. Yeah, everyone go uh, go check out One Short Eye on YouTube. You won't regret it if you're a Sierra nerd like me. What if I told you I was also a Alexander royal person? decides to show his royal insignia ring to the Castle of the Crown Guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible calling card he can think of. Oh, that's a great Good question. Day. I'm Prince Ben, Alexander I'll get to that in just actually let me pause here. Ben, you ask uh, as an ask Jess anything. You played these first few scenes, was that to test this on Scum VM, or did you buy it back in the day and just not get very far? Um, that was relatively modern. I think I jumped in to get a screenshot of something at some point uh, and just played these first few screens uh to uh to play around. Yeah, I didn't even purchase this one way back in the day. I don't think I got it until I eventually got the King's Quest collection on GOG, and then I've waited like another 10 years past that. An acquaintance of Princess Cosima. If you could just inform her that I'm here, please. <laughs> so everyone says. Let me just look at that ring. What does it say, Gruff? Nah, why does it say Gruff? of Daventry, Prince Alexander. <laughs> Wait here while I go see what Captain Saladin thinks of this. <laughs> Grawl. Yeah, it's such minutia. That's a great word, right? Grawl. This is why I roll persuasion. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry. Oh, wow. Look at that cool dog. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure Wizir al Hazred will want to meet you, if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Please follow me. Oh, Lemming, do we have a uh, sexy boy coming up? Stupid sexy Saladin. Lord al Hazred, a visitor to see you. Prince Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cosima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard. Thank you, Gal's Quest. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cosima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> I'm here to get a girlfriend. Well, I came to make sure that Cosima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. Cosima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Cosima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be mm. appropriate. You see, it is hard. Sorry, I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> the 
Thank you, Nick. That's our first girl in the tower of the evening. Let's call your local radio station and request it, please. Time for Kasima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. Hmm. As was her parents' wish, Kasima and I are to be wed. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Kasima wants now. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. Joke's on you. I'm no gentleman. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Kasima... Well, I well. apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Mm. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable, mm. inhospitable. these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. He's got big Jafar swag. Wow. See you later, Saladin. You have had your hearing with Wizir al Hazred. I trust you'll respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Six, seven, I have no idea what ending I'm going the guard for. Dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. You know, we sometimes dunk on Sierra a little bit around here for the quality of voice acting and like King's Quest V and Space Quest IV and some of their early um some of their early games. But by the time they had reached King's Quest VI here, they have really upped that game quite a bit. The narrow path ends abruptly at a pile of boulders. Hmm. Rocks abound on this lush volcanic isle. I have to admit, I've been, uh, and Sarah, it's okay to spoil. I, I'm not too worried about it, but I've been playing so much um, Baldur's Gate the last few days that I'm just looking at all these solutions like, oh, no problem. If I have enough climbing skill, I can just do a strength check here. I'll head up through the window. Shouldn't be an the issue. The vines are too flimsy to support Alexander. As far as we've seen, Daventry has yeah, royal sure. family, leprechauns, a gnome, and some poor wood carrots. It's got the uh, the wizard, the sorcerer guy. Used to have a witch. If Alexander was a halfling, he might be able to climb that. But if I shapeshifted into uh, a halfling. I could bard perform my way up those vines if I needed to. Everyone, go play Bar Baldur's Gate 3. If you, if you like RPGs at all, oh my god, it's so good. An old beggar is peddling his wares in the village. He offers a variety of lamps, all neatly lined up on a long pole. Are there dog guards? I mean, there's some gnolls here and there. Uh, does that count? They're more like uh, hyena guards. The peddler's pole provides convenient transportation of the lamp seller's wares. There are six new lamps on the pole. Old lamps for new. Old lamps for new. What's weird is being a Sierra guy for all these years, like a lot of these lines are kind of memes within the Sierra fan community. So it's like, I knew he was going to say old lamps for new, even though I Good haven't day, played Pepper. this. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Yes. Taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? 
Well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, well, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. Well, good for you. Why don't you just give me Alexander a new lamp? will have to deal with the lamp seller if he wants to obtain one of those new lamps. Old lamps for new. That's bad management of the lamp economy. Good day. Hello. Hello. Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt, and so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended, and why the crown has not done something about it is beyond me. This is Lee from Walking Walking Dead. Dead. I am a shopkeeper, not a politician, and can only hope for better days. Elephant enter in stores the same way, like, uh, <laughs> Greetings, merchant. What can you tell me of the town of Raleigh-Durham? Uh, what secrets does it hold? Towering mightily over the other pawn shop curiosities, the stuffed bear makes an ostentatious display. The world-famous talking bear has been sulking ever <laughs> since his abduction from a small mountain community in California. He refuses to discuss real estate. You know, I've met the world-famous talking bear in Oakhurst, California. I traveled there on my honeymoon, like a real big nerd, to see the old Sierra uh, headquarters and uh, have photos with uh, the talking bear. <laughs> so... The back wall of the shop holds various odds and ends. For example, a hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. Well, I see some wax for that, some beeswax. Cat cookie mix. Play tricks on your friends, the box says. Mm -hmm. A golden bridle finder for finding those nearly invisible golden bridles. Self-adhesive emeralds, what you <laughs> use when you don't have honey. That's pretty funny. Tongue climbing gear, tested on over 100 whale tongues. This is great. A uvula tickler, guaranteed to make large mammals sneeze. Yeah, King's Quest 3 reference, King's Quest 4 references all over the place. A cheese hook for retrieving cheese out of small holes. Gotta do that in King's Quest 5. A shovel that's guaranteed not to break for over 100 grave diggings. King's Quest 4. A bridge repair kit. For when you've crossed a bridge one too many times. Peace Quest 2. Stair traction pads. Stop slipping off those narrow staircases. That's a reference to Stair Quest. A hull hole detector. Cat cook. A gold. Okay. The back wall of the shop holds various bottles and potions. For example, a bottle labeled Owl Courage Potion for spineless owls. You're going in there. I am staying out here, Graham. A bottle of Gnome Be Gone. Miniature carpet cleaner for those castles in a bottle. <laughs> hey, Gad, good to see you. A tall skeleton lends an air of myth. Oops. Bird's Nest Soup Mix, treasure not included. East Quest 1. What's going on in this game? Well... We are on a prince quest. Uh, the game, first of all, is totally uh, mislabeled, Grayson. It's a great question. Um, we're on a prince quest, and so far, uh, the girl that we have sailed across seas and wrecked a ship and probably killed a crew over um, is not currently available. Garlic, especially grown for vampire resilience. Magic mirror glass cleaner for when your future looks fuzzy. That's pretty funny. Shark repellent. A small box of enchanted sorcerer's flea and tick collars. A bottle of gnome be gone. Okay, those are pretty fun. A small red drum. The land of the green well, they really, must uh... have at least one inhabitant with interest in the mystical. For a crystal ball has been traded in, along with the more common household goods. Yeah, Yankee gal, we had uh, full-on Dracula in King's Quest 2. 
What the pawn axe? shop is. T we got here on the. An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. Uh, you got the any old lamps? Full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. I want a mint. Alexander takes a mint. Alexander takes a closer look at the items on the counter. Oh, what do we have here? The flute is only made is that of sinister wood, flute? but its notes are fine and true. <laughs> okay, we have the fun redemption. Those of you who are watching for the first time, uh, we uh, we sometimes play a little game here. Uh, ben, uh, PS Garrick, everyone be sure to go follow Ben too. Uh, also, Adventure Game Streamer screen, uh, streams on Tuesday nights. Uh, definitely go check out his channel. But uh, he's redeemed artificial intelligence. That is where we take uh, a user-generated prompt, we plug it into the mid-journey AI bot, and we see how well it is able to capture what we're going for. And in this case, Ben has given us the prompt, what the world would look like today if Girl of the Tower was the number one hit on the Billboard charts. Mid Journey will take this excellent prompt. It will work its magic, which is to say it will plagiarize and combine and mix together alchemy style, the art of human artists and spit something now on the other side. As soon as it does, I will share those results live here on the stream. So let me tell you, it's at 15% and I don't think it knows what to do with this is my initial reaction. I think you're going to get elements of the words you requested but honestly any of these i'm looking at them now i'm going to share them with you in a moment i'll spoil what's coming by saying i think any of these uh could be a decent cover for a uh, fantasy novel so uh there we go uh <laughs> grayson has high hopes on this one which i'm glad to hear that okay is everyone ready this is mid journey's attempt to capture a world uh where uh East Quest 6 was the number one. Hey, Magic Map Studio. <laughs> Thank you, Yakubi. Good timing. Here we go. Bloop. So that is what Mid Journey imagines the world would look like if uh, Girl in the Tower had become a number one charting billboard hit so again um all of these i feel like could be a good fantasy novel cover like i i like what it's going for here it definitely has girls and towers um there's a lot of girls <laughs> looking at tower an unreal tension tech demo it does have that vibe <laughs> but yeah i mean i think this answers all your questions apparently it would look like some sort of world with towers. I guess if this game had been a hit, we would have stopped building like split level brick homes and just started uh, building the, the real estate market would have gone entirely tower focused. Um, so <laughs> there it is. Oh, wow. Uh, Magic Map Studio is doing a remastered soundtrack project. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to check that out after the stream. But there you go, Ben. Did that give you uh, exactly what you wanted? Uh, are, are you are you satisfied? I guess would be my question to you. Very much so. Good. You are truly whacked, Ben. All right, let's get back to the game. How much looks like she made her tower in Fortnite? A plain wooden flute is displayed. A Have you an interest in tinderboxes? It's like so it just casts dissonant whispers on me. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Dark. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the song doesn't really work in a round. Thank y'all for that sticker. This Ooh. one is only slightly battered. It holds a good supply of flint, a sturdy striking pad, and even a candle in case you find yourself with not else to hold the flame. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
Thank you, Dark, for Saxy Graham. I see you have noticed my mechanical nightingale. She is made of plain tin, but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine. Hmm. Barely distinguishable from the real thing. How much is it? I'm interested in that mechanical nightingale on the counter. What do you me desire up, woman? to give me in trade? The items on the front counter are all of equally slight value. Worth only a copper or two. They are handy mm. items, nonetheless. Of course he was King Andre and Curse of Mikeon. That makes so much sense. Okay, what do I want to buy? What do I want to buy? I have ye copper coin. The small green Alexander. I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front oh, counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You Alexander looks. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. Yes, I'm intrigued. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll Gra remember. Thank you. Grayson, that's a great question. Why haven't I played this game before? Uh, there's really not a great answer to it, unfortunately. I just sort of missed it. Um, I wasn't avoiding it. It looked just as good as any King's Quest game. I think that somehow I just ended up never buying it. Now... Hello. I will be right up. It could be. Now, I said that initially, but now that I'm thinking back, I did feel a little burned by how poorly some of Sierra's early CD-ROM games uh, ran on my dinky old computer. It could be the fact that I just decided, like, I'm not in on CD-ROM stuff. Then there was a disc version of it, so maybe that's not it. I don't think I have a good answer. That is the official Sierra door sound effect, isn't it? Never thought now, about that before. What can I do for you? The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. His intelligent eyes are slightly blurry from long nights spent reading by candlelight. I love the uh, the book Alexander perspective here. standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. From the tower. Wow, points just Good for day, talking to this guy? I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Mm -hmm. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown. Royal family's castle. Hey, thank you for the follow packet gang. Welcome, man. the castle, we also have this village and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Too many Legend isles, that's great. of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes. But probably just local superstition. 
We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three <laughs> islands you mentioned. Yes, tell me more about them. How might I learn island. more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Wow. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at been the there, castle. Been there, done that. They didn't care for me. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. I love their double spacing after their periods in this game. Uh, <laughs> the fireplaces always sit in the middle of bookcases. Yeah, it's not ideal. Already, the writing in this is such a uh, improvement over King's Quests one through five. The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. Oh yeah, we already, we already looked at that goober. There's a book entitled The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages on the Small Table. Alexander feels... Step out of the way, Alex. Alexander rests his feet. Alexander picks up and leafs idly through a book called The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages. Middle-aged is an interesting choice there, isn't it, uh, Grundy? Well, that was refreshing. These shelves hold a collection of oddly titled <laughs> guidebooks. Alexander notices such books as How to Become King with Little or No Rupees Down, Finding the Right Girl with the Right Dowry, and Why Good Princesses Like Bad Wizards. Volumes of poetry are on display on this bookshelf. Oh, I want one of those. Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides mm, to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. And another. Not Upon bad at all. Sure, the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed. Oh, that she were not there. Yikes! And another. Oh, what dark adult man you? What power has chained me through and through, and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless wow. thing has captured me? and made me powerless to flee. What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Ah, it just keeps going, huh? It does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful Scry? cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. It's a good first date poem. Yeah, I think in general, Alexander doesn't quite have first date etiquette down. Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Maybe you don't realize. I'm a prince. The old man would not be what? interested in anything that Alexander might show him. For some inexplicable reason, Alexander feels compelled to avoid this hooded old man. Push him into the fire. I'm getting real witch from King's Quest 1 vibes out of this guy. Alexander isn't interested in the cookbooks on that shelf. He's had an aversion to cooking ever since he experimented with a certain cookie recipe involving cat hair and fish oil. I love King's Quest 3. I need to go back and replay it. I haven't streamed King's Quest 3 and haven't played it probably in 20 plus years. Uh, one of my favorite Sierra games, but also the uh, timing out of Mananan uh, constantly popping up 
stressed me out so much as a kid, I think I've been afraid to go back to it. Right now, Alexander is too involved with the Alexander is a little old. Alexander. There's a small table. Alexander doesn't the want sign. the children's book. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read 10 pence, but that was crossed out and replaced with 5 pence, then 1 pence, then free. The sign then currently Mike reads, pence. take one, please. Only one book remains on the table. It looks like the bookshop owner really wants to get rid of that book. Hmm. Are you telling me to pick it up? Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so, good sir. Really? Thanks. Alexander is carrying a book. Yeah, read that book. Alexander opens the bargain book and reads a paragraph the bargain at random. Book. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of 40 half dulcimers divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese ah. put over the result of 10 fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of 53 and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. <sighs> Wild Beast Lard. Phew, what an incredibly boring book. No wonder the bookshop owner wanted to get rid of it so badly. A plaque bearing a merchant crest hangs over the doorway. The bookshop owner must be proud of his credentials. Oh yeah, page I dropped, thank you. That would have been a great opportunity for the Sierra Moose in the game. Alexander picks up the fallen. It's the love poem he particularly liked. Ooh la la. Must, I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. You can actually do that libraries too if you rip a page out of a book and they don't see you. Just keep. An antique leather-bound book is displayed on a little stand on the counter. On the elaborate cover is the title, Ye Useful Book of Magic Spells. <laughs> I want a Ye Useful Book of Magic Spells. How much for that book on the counter, merchant? It is a fine book, is it not? I obtained it from the estate of the one and only magician this kingdom has ever had poofed himself into an aardvark in the end. That's oh, the problem with doing so magic in alphabetical order. I never found the spells all that useful myself, but then I lead a boring life. I tell you what, if you can find another rare book, something a bit more marketable, I might be willing to exchange the spell book for it. Hmm... I don't know why I'm saving. I don't think a Yeti's gonna burst down or anything. Why don't Might you take I this? return this? Please, I had a hard enough time getting rid of that book in the first place. What if I told you I was royalty? Would you be interested in this ring? It is a stunning ring, but I do not deal with jewelry and personal effects. Books and hard gold are all I can handle. Hey, Revan, welcome, you man. Check with Still get the bad ending with door, the spell. Though, he deals in such things. Okay, so is there anything else in here I need to get? So I think people are saying there are three items. A collection of children. A small fire. Perhaps I need fire. And burn a perfectly good hand. Good day, sir. The mysterious old man. Uh 
All right, got everything for now. Thank y'all. The Casina. house is made of stucco in an architectural style native to the island. It is apparently quite old since climbing vines embrace its exterior. The girl is too far away. Alexander I just break in. intrude on private property unless he You lazy thing! Get back to work and stay away from those roses! What's the Easter egg, Grundy? I've told you a million times. Those flowers are too sweet for the likes of you. Wow. You've still got to do the breakfast dishes, make lunch, and clean the stables yet this morning. Your veil back on. No one wants to look at your face. Goodness gracious. Yes, stepmother. Yeah, Revan. Yeah, I've never played this one before. I'm super excited for it. I'm a huge Sierra fan and just missed Home this one along the way. As graceful as gazelles wave in the warm tropical breeze. Red roses beautifully cover the top of the house's fence and gate arbor. Poor evil stepmother. Oh, the high res version uses Roberta's face as a portrait. That's great. Hey, stranger, come join me. The water is wonderful, and I can show you the way to the next island. Okay. Considering the poor The powerful currents grab Alexander. Struggle as he might, he feels himself being pulled out to sea. <laughs> Not a very good swimmer, are you? <laughs> That's why I'd say if someone's drowning right next to me. <laughs> Help me! Sorry, love, love. I think not. <laughs> As his head submerges for the third time, Alexander finds himself pondering the wisdom of going out on a limb for a stranger. <laughs> Tickets only. Next. Kevin, I saw your uh, redemption Alexander earlier. Alexander couldn't handle those currents. That boy must be an unbelievably strong swimmer. So far, I find it really charming. It is... Uh, I like the art direction. Like it's not exactly the same kind of like fantasy setting we saw in other King's Quest games. I think they've done some interesting things in this first island and uh, the writing is so much stronger than what we saw in King's Quest V. Hey, six, seven, thank you for redeeming Hall of Fame. That's fantastic. Come on, jump in. A little water won't hurt you. Thank you for all the support. A young boy is happily swimming in the sea off the docks. How many stars will that make now, six, seven? The ocean currents continue to murmur. What are you waiting for? I... Yeah, the, the creepy eye. Uh... Good day, I'm Alexander. What are you doing in the sea? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm swimming. Um. I mean, come join me. The water's wonderful. I can show you the way to the next island. Hmm. That's strange. The young boy in the water just disappeared. Oh well, perhaps he just dove under the water. <laughs> you know how it is, like when you see someone disappear in a cloud of smoke and you're like, maybe they just went underwater and I got confused. Hey, Blob. I always was more of a Space Quest fan too, but uh, I loved King's Quest. King's Quest was my first Sierra game, my first adventure game, so... Even as a Space Quest mega fan, I have a lot of love for uh, for King's Quest. Yeah, well, that was weird. But you know, for the royal family of Daventry, was it that weird? A worn wooden vessel has been dry docked on a jetty. The boat is in sad shape. A hole in the hull and the condition of its boards make it obvious that the vessel is no longer seaworthy. Oh wow. Let's uh, let's run back before that message goes back too far. We'll come back here. Yeah, Susu. <laughs> Rocket, the uh, mental gymnastics Alexander, the narrator, have to go through to explain. <laughs> All the weird stuff is wonderful. Let's see. Click the talk icon the gate three times. Um, 
Whoa. Let's see, so... Skate. Squeak. Skate. Skate. I... Alexander is stand... There's and? no reason to touch that. Alexander oh. is greeted with silence. Oh, did it work? <laughs> hey, those are my pro skills. You know what this year is all about. Decap Jenna year four. Jess gets good. This is the year where I get good. This is Decap Jedi year four. I do this stuff. First try. <laughs> Thank you, Grandy. <laughs> World record pays for booty percent. That's what I'm going for, man. A wooden door leads. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah. Excuse me. My name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. Well, I'd just like to talk to you about the islands if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. Come on inside. Sure. Cool uh, houseboat what you got is it here. You wanted to talk about, young man. Everything. I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Good question. Nautical thing. Uh, it just ain't safe to sail these days. What with the islands feuding and all. Wazir al Hazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me, I don't think she'll ever see water again. <sighs> Sigh. But why are the islands feuding? <laughs> something about stolen property. Thank you for the follow, Revan. Thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. Then this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired. This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. Same, honestly. But there must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. The owner of the pawn hmm. shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. Tell me more about the ferry. Yes. I remember when I used to ferry Queen Alaria and Princess Cosima themselves. There was no thought of danger back then. They used to go visiting to care for the needy and to keep up the friendly relations between the islands. I remember their last trip. Things had started getting nasty by then, and when they came back aboard, I gathered that the Queen and the Princess had been received a bit coldly. Princess Cosima. <laughs> well, this guy's got a lot of information. Was terribly upset. But who could be spreading these lies? Hey, she asked the queen. But the queen had no answer. I like how this guy's serving like sailor chef. That's the vibe I'm getting from his floppy hat. It's like uh, maybe I'll take you out for a sunset cruise, or maybe I will make you an omelet at the omelet bar. It's hard to say. What do you do now that the ferry no longer operates? Me? I'm out of a job. The job my ancestors have held for generations. I'm the only one trained like to a shark the necklace. the rocks. But that knowledge does me no good now. Is there no other boat on the island? One that might be more seaworthy? Boats don't last long on these shoals, as you may have found out if you got here by ship. You can be quite sure that this old ferry is, or was, the only craft on the island. 
Yeah, Revan, you can definitely play the high res version. I was having a little bit of trouble getting the high res to go into proper 4 3 aspect ratio, so I decided to play the low res version instead. But it's definitely doable. I think it was just some problem with the setup. Tell on my me end. more about Princess Cosima. I have a big crush ah, on her. Such a beautiful child, and so pure of heart. <laughs> Why a contrary thought has never crossed her mind. Weird thing to say, but okay. Her mother was the same. The king and queen, they served the islands, not the other way around. Always thinking about the people. Ah, <sighs> they are sorely missed. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonders. Oh, this guy really does have a lot of information. Bit crazy, mind you. Got to have a good sense of humor to enjoy a tour there. <laughs> Tell me about a what else island. can you tell me about the land? The Isle of the Beast is pretty, but unfortunately, you can't get very far onto the island. Why don't you tell me everything you know at once? What else can you tell me about the land? The inhabitants of the Isle of the Sacred Mountain are the most gorgeous creatures you'll ever see. If you ever get to see them, that is. What else can you tell me? The Castle of the Crown <laughs> sure is a beauty. What else can some say that the land of the Green Isles is near the edge of the world and that the deadly currents are a result of a magnetism that sucks life from this world to the next? Of course, that's just silly talk. <laughs> Very naturalistic, this dialogue. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonders a lovely spot. A bit crazy, mind you. Gotta have a good sense of humor to enjoy a tour there. I mean, honestly, Kevin, Life Magnet sound like something straight out of LucasArts Afterlife. What else? The Isle of the Beast? Okay. Can I have this a thing? A table is positioned in front of two plain wooden chairs. The table consists of a board placed over a small barrel. There's a rabbit's foot on the table. Oh, lucky me. I see you have a rabbit's foot. Has it brought you much luck? As you can see, my luck's been out <laughs> for some time now, despite that old charm. I live on a boat. Why don't you take it with you? Perhaps giving the darn thing away will bring me good fortune at last. Perhaps it will at that. Thank you. Do you have anything else I can have for free? Alexander doesn't want to take the ferryman's lamps. Need a lamp, though. Uh, Alexander doesn't want to take anything from the cabin unless the ferryman offers it to him. Alexander doesn't want... Alexander isn't in the mood for a nap. <laughs> Besides, he finds the thought of the old sea salt's bed linens rather uninviting. Can't we sleep in your bed? Alexander is sitting inside the ferry's cabin. The place displays the neatness of a seaman and the sparseness of a bachelor. Hmm. There are few frills and comforts. A seaman bachelor, you say? But the sunlight shines cheerily on the oaken beams, and the portholes admit a pleasant breeze. Again, that level of description, though, far exceeds what we see in most other King's Quest games. The writing here has definitely stepped up. Okay, well, I uh, bid you adieu. Well, I think I'll be going now. Posh, not at all. Posh. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. <sighs> Posh is my fourth favorite spice. Alexander wouldn't know what to do with the old bag of sand. The shore is too far off. Yeah, Mike, I agree. The character animation there, the shake, was very Cargo good. Bay is unlikely to hold anything of interest or have a very pleasant smell after months of dry docking. Alexander decides not to descend into the dark hole. <laughs> Kevin, if you want my canonical ranking of the Spats Girls, uh, first of all, you're going to get it whether you do or not. But uh, let's see. Met Sailor. Uh, my canonical ranking is uh, sporty, ginger, scary, posh, and uh, then baby bringing up the rear. Hey, this looks a lot like that tree we got mistletoe from in King's Quest Three, huh? Alexander is standing at the.
Thank you, Matt. <laughs> it's endlessly funny to me. Let's see. So... We have that. It doesn't look like the mistletoe tree. Okay, I feel better now. I was like, what a weird thing to pop into my brain. Also, uh, I was going to mention... Uh, for subs, we have uh, a new feature, uh, talking stickers that you can slap on the stream, um, that you can uh, have Jim Walls, the world famous talking bear that we just saw in the shop a little while ago, or now Princess Rosella say anything you want them to. Within reason. <laughs> Don't abuse that. Alexander D Alexander D Alexander D Alexander don't Alexander can enter the I want to ring the bell though Hmm That's the King's Quest 7, uh, Rosella with some new eyes and mouth there. In that, uh, in that sticker. Hmm. Where to? What to do? Girl in the tower, I'm reaching out. I'll read these guys a sweet love poem. Oh yeah, he said to talk about I the really map. Must That's right. get inside the castle to see the princess. Perhaps this will convince you. Hey, thank you. Be gone. We have no interest in anything you carry. You are not welcome at the castle. <laughs> thank you so much for the follow. That's amazing to think that Alexander would walk up and be like. I know you were given strict orders not to let me in, but what if I told you I had a love poem for this woman I've never met? Well, I've met her once, I guess. Who had the magic map pawn shop or the bookstore? We'll find out soon. Good day. Oh no, it's this guy. A mysterious old man also patronizes the pawn shop. Good day, sir. The old man just glares at Alexander and does not reply. Mmm, he's got that creepy eye too. Hey, thanks for dropping in Magic Map Studio. Glad you could be here. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Excuse me, merchant, but the ferryman mentioned that you might have a magic map of the land of the Green Isles. Why, as a matter of fact, I do. I keep it under the counter. It's been gathering dust so long that I nearly forgot about it. <laughs> it was quite a few years ago, you see. The estate of a wealthy wizard fell into my hands when he died. It was useless magical junk mostly, which reminds me, I've still got some things of his in the back that I need to dump out. I'll take anyway, it all. The magic map was the one true treasure in the lot. The wizard was quite old and feeble and had enchanted the map to aid in traveling. I've had one of those before. It is said that one need only desire to be on an island depicted on the map to find oneself there. It'll just be pulled there by it an odd sensation? It is a valuable map, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, no one is interested in traveling these days. It is far too dangerous with the current state of the kingdom. What would you take for the map? I would normally want something magic in return, but since I am hardly overrun with prospective buyers, I would be willing to take anything of equal value in exchange. Hmm. A barter economy, eh? Would you be interested in making a trade for this merchant? Hmm. A rabbit's foot. I don't guess I can mess this up, can I? Would you be interested in trading for this book? I am afraid not. 
If Alexander wants to exchange one of his possessions... Would you be willing to take oh. my family ring in exchange for the magic map? Man, now I have to live Daventry, like a commoner. Are you a king then? A commoner with a sweet scarf. No, that's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. Hmm. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still, I like that element of continuity. It is only gold. There are more important things at stake now. Then you now own a magic map, Prince Alex. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great value in your travels, you can come back for your ring. I would hate to see it melted down for Yeah, gold. me too, kinda. Got a pawn shop ah, you're right and here. a warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. Mm. You might try the beach. Thank you. Try the beach. You are very kind. And I'll remember about the map. Okay, did I make the rat exchange there? Am I good? Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander, and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. The old man Narc sticks him, the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. Good walk animation. Seconds later in the castle. Master! I followed Prince Alexander as you wished. From the pawn shop owner, he just abstained. I just reprieved. <laughs> he just got a magic Some of Josh Mandel's <laughs> finest work. You fool. You've been eating those mints again. I ordered you to stop that. Yes. Oh, master. Is this Josh doing the voice as well oh, as the uh what is this about a magic map? The capture work here? With the map, Prince Alexander could travel anywhere as bigly <gasps> nice voice performance. As I can. I thought I took care of the only means of travel. Oh, never mind. By my scimitar. I can't have him stirring things up. By now. my scimitar. Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them... I want my cookie crisp. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate we cut away right at that key moment. Oh, wait. The boy. A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. She sings the most beautiful song Alexander has ever heard. Mmm. Going oh, after garbage, eh? I'll dig through your chamber pot. Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers. I mean, that could be useful. Shattered crystal ball. A cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. It's true. A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. Probably the most beautiful song Alexander's ever heard because he hasn't heard Girl in the Tower yet. The old A nightingale. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it You've on been the replaced run. by AI. The mechanical nightingale hey, sings you. a sweet tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. This is good. Great soundtrack on this one. 
the nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. You know, I used to be able to talk to you thanks to some dough I stuck in my ears. Not anymore, though. Sorry. Hello, little nightingale. Well, what do you see? Oh my gosh. It's a sticker party, everybody, for the next minute. You can just hover over the screen and slap as many stickers as you want, free of charge. Have at it. Three, two, Thank you, Dark. One, go! Wow, what a sticker party. Oh my goodness, look at all those stickers. <laughs> so many stickers, lots of gym walls. I see Officer Cedric. I see a very creepy Rosella. <laughs> I see lots of uh, decap Jedi as a jerk. There's a hubba hubba from Flat of the Amazon Queen. Hubba hubba. Uh, wow. So, <laughs> Roberta's. Okay, this will only take about a minute and a half to clear off. <laughs> All right. Wow. What a sticker party. Thank you for slapping that sticker, Dark. And since it didn't actually play your song because of the sticker party, once all this peels away, uh, I'll give you a, uh, a <laughs> another sticker gratis here, and we'll get one more rendition of Girl in the Tower. Girl in the Tower, I'm reaching out. Please tell me All right. Here we go. We're almost back. We're almost back, baby. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's get a proper uh, slap here. Girl in the tower, oh. I'm out. Please tell me what to do. There we go. The nightingale only looks at Alexander curiously and continues to sing. Sweet, sweet nightingale. There we go. Cinderella deep cut, you know it. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale. It plays its pleasant, the living nightingale in the tree, listens to the tune. Hey, Cobra Commander, great to see you. I'm loving it so far. Let me give a shout out here to Cobra. Everyone, uh, one of my favorite streamers uh, here, Cobra Commander. Be sure to uh, drop over uh, by her stream sometime. She plays lots of retro games, lots of retro Sierra games. Always a pleasure uh, to uh, drop in and Cobra. I think that uh, you said, uh, now, was this your first Sierra game or your favorite? I know it's one that's near and dear to your heart, right? Alexander holds out the poem to the nightingale. Of oh, snake. To Alexander's surprise, the nightingale swoops down and grabs the page from his hand. Neck. The nightingale flies off towards the castle with the poem. Where might she be taking it? Well, it's great to see you. Welcome, man. Everyone be sure to go follow Cobra Commander. First way you ever convince your parents to buy it for you. You know, my first adventure game was King's Quest II, so uh, this series means a lot to me. So that's just going to stay up on the screen, huh? Hmm, do I need to do anything else now that I've, uh... What was supposed to happen? Restore? What went wrong?
Hmm, so what do I need to do instead? Just don't worry about it for now. Uh, is there someone I still need to meet, or what happened later? Am I ready to, uh, to leave the island? <laughs> it's a chance to do the wrong thing. Ah, that's why I do best, though. Alexander I let them backseat all they want. I don't mind backseating. <laughs> hmm, where to? Isle of Wonder? It's the one shaped most like an apostrophe, so I'm going to try there first. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. There's the strange pulling sensation. Oh man, what a uh, great deal there in the chat. One of the oysters is sitting up in bed and doesn't look very happy. He seems to be the only one who can't sleep. Oh, I'm that mm. oyster. In the oyster's mouth, Alexander can see a glint of white. Yeah, you should, I mean, the bot, uh, I mean, if that's true, um, that would be fantastic. Oh, man, we were just getting ready to make a deal. One of the oysters is sitting up mm. in the oyster's mouth. Okay. Ooh. What do we have there? A string of letters floats in what? the water. The letters spell out, where are you going? Alexander's heard of alphabet soup, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Alexander's voice gets lost in the rippling of the tide. Oh, the tough. sentence floating in the water has... Floating sentence. The oyster already looks a little perturbed and. Pr Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Is he not in an oyster bed? Oh, oh, that's I'm not so the Jeff. He is sleep. an oyster bed. I have a terrible ache in my mouth. Oh, this is Martin Prince. What's wrong with your mouth? but it hurts too much to talk. I mean, also, if you told me, Ben, this was our mutual friend, Sarah, I would also believe that. What's wrong with your mouth? Webigail, no, there you go. but it hurts too much to talk. It's definitely, it's one of the canonical Sarah voices. No question. To the north. The island is... Alexander hears some... Uh-oh. Mm, what do we have here? Of the isle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With we the ears we are. Nose, tongue, hands, and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man it dies. Oh, man. Old Tom Troll, smell your smell. Do that which you do so well. Uh. Alexander holds the item out for the gnome with the stupendous nose. My nose cannot be tricked that way. The smell of man <laughs> still rules the day. Mmm. Thought I had a solution there. A man, a man so sad knows into the way he sea he goes. Are these weird dwarfs getting ready to kill me? The game, yeah. must toss Alexander too far out into the sea for him to get his footing. The currents drag him under. <laughs> A lot of drowning so far in this game. <laughs> Tickets only. Next. 
Next. Guess those gnomes couldn't reach a consensus. Mm. All beans. It's Decaf Jedi on Twitch.tv. <laughs> we had an all beans moment. Alexander picks up the object floating in the water. It appears to be a string of letters. They say, where are you going? Alexander decides to keep the odd sentence, even though it is incomplete. Uh, what, wait? Where? Alexander is carrying, oddly enough, a sentence. It says, where are you going? Thank you, Ben. Or, Kevin, you're up, Ben. That won't do anything. That won't do anything for the little oyster. How do you feel about poetry? That won't do any. How do you feel about rabbits? That won't do. How do you no re feel about lullabies? That won't do any. Hey, decomposer. How do you feel about it? That won't do. How do you feel this about this sentence? Where are you going to sleep? That won't do. Oh man, I played a lot of these games on uh, on 486. How about a boring old book? If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. Hey, that would be great. <laughs> What's so good? Oh, it's a close Two up. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of forty half dulcimers. Divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of ten fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of fifty-three and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Wildebeest. Wildebeest. Mm. Your second take on that. Wildebeest. Yields a gilded uh. minnow of precise measurements. 2,069 centadrills by 3,023,000. Mm. Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. Hey! You fixed my mouth! It feels great! I... I... Ah, uh, the little oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. Hmm, valuable poil, eh? I'm guessing I don't have whatever I need to get around these, uh, these guys yet, do I? Alexander pulls out his... Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. <laughs> the line's always good. Swallow the pearl, have violent diarrhea, which should bypass the nose guy. Um, so I have something valuable now. Do I want to go trade it in to do anything, or should I explore elsewhere? Maybe I'll explore elsewhere. Alexander. I'd like to see more of these other islands. Quote, unquote, islands. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Ah, getting his ring back would be a possibility at this stage. Okay. Do I need his ring for anything immediately, or can I afford to do that in a bit? Alexander is standing at the edge of the sea on a heavily forested island. As far as the eyes can see, tall trees spread out their branches as though straining to link arms, their tops forming a canopy above. A path leads north through the forest. Mm. This heavily forested isle is dotted with Alexander is The denseness of the forest makes it in That's moving around. It makes me think there's something there. The trees have If the tree stump is hiding anything, it's only local fauna. There's the chance will figure it out. Don't have too much faith. Alexander I've gotten I'm gonna go back and get that ring now that everybody's talking it up. Um Alexander. This game just has beautifully animated backgrounds. It's a beautiful game. <laughs> the 
<laughs> this is a good narr this is a nice soothing narrator, right? Good day. Good day to you as well. Give me back my stuff. Please. I found this large pearl. I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. It's what you I used to rule over peasants. Felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. Yeah, pawn shop lovers, lo or pawn shop owners love it when they can reunite someone's possessions. Pardon me. What are my thoughts on Ed Wynn? Why does that name sound super familiar? So right now my thoughts are, I don't know. Sneasel Weasel, that's right, that's three sneezes, which officially, as we say around these parts, uh, that is to say my home, makes me a Sneasel Weasel. <laughs> Oh, he's the cowardly lion too, right? Am I right about that or am I imagining it? The girl is too f Are you out here again? <laughs> Did you finish the chores I gave you? Yes, stepmother. The Mad Hatter, okay. Clean. Then start polishing the silverware! Do I have to tell you everything? Yes, stepmother. Right away. <laughs> you know, I, uh... Speaking of the Mad Hatter, I just watched with my daughter a couple of days ago the live-action version of Alice in Wonderland with uh, Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter. And, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this and you're really worried about how it ends, uh... It is the most unbelievable thing in the world to me that that movie ends with Johnny Depp doing a CGI enhanced breakdance routine, and that's like the big climax at some level. It's uh, it's wild, you know, Cobra. We actually got that uh, Easter egg to work earlier. It was uh, pretty good. Okay. Yeah, Grundy helped me uh, identify it. And yeah, we got lucky on the first attempt. It's a very bad CGI uh, <laughs> breakdance routine. Okay. So I'm looking for a... For someone new. Are some good movie breakdance routines. Well, uh, the movie Breakin'. Breakin' 2, Electric Boogaloo. Good day, Prince Alexander. Step up to the streets. Step up to the streets, too. But I guess that... that well, they wanted, him, like, his head to spin around. It was the worst. Hello. I will be right up. Seems to be a new guy. Now, what can I do for you? Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. Jal is great. Excuse me again, sir. You mentioned the princess. I told you I'm not interested in talking to strangers. <laughs> what if I told you I was Determined rich? Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, 
But my <laughs> Sorry, name is Alexander Sith, you need to pay attention to me. I live in a I castle. I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying flitmice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? How came you Why, here? By a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Chalo's music playing yes, here yes, now. Alexander I Cassima saw her briefly <laughs> when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me. A prince Alexander of Daventry. That's me, I'm baby. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. She's really excited about this new guy. See, she she now, arrived home a few weeks But unfortunately. Late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known. <laughs> terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition, and not required, but... Not the required. Wazir says she Be very insisted clear. out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are, and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon You're required me. to tell My me about name is law. Chalo. I am clown to the royal court, and have been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Caliphon and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life, so in love. And Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was such a charming little thing, smart as a whip, kind and sweet. Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not wow. trust the wazir Thank or you, his Jalo. plans for Cosima. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing, Cosima's pet nightingale. I might be able to send the princess a message. As mm. it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. Now I'm afraid I must hurry back to the castle. I'll try to return to the bookshop again later. Thank you for speaking with me, Jalo. I hope we meet again soon. I like Jalo. And I have to be honest, let's say there was a big Sierra fan convention someday. Um, first of all, wouldn't that be fun? Uh, but second of all, I feel like if I were going to cosplay as a Sierra character, I could probably pull off Jalo better than any other immediate alternatives. So there you go. Do I have those shoes? I can get those shoes. Don't you worry about those shoes. I can hop on Amazon. I can have those shoes in two days. Prime shipping, baby. Let's see. Do I want to do the Nightingale trick now? Alexander Wines the Hey, thanks for dropping by such minutia. It's great to have you here. Have a great evening. It plays its pleasant tinny tune. The living nightingale in the tree listens to the tune curiously. Okay. Let's see here. What if I gave you this poem? Alexander holds out the love poem to the nightingale hoping that she perhaps is the nightingale that Jallo spoke of, and that she might be able to take the words of love to her mistress, Cosima. Take it to that girl in the tower, the please. The nightingale swoops down and grabs the poem. She flies off towards the castle, perhaps to Cosima? 
Perhaps. Sing Sing, what have you found? A scrap of paper? Oh, this is no mere bit of paper, but words of love. Who sent this? It must have been Abdul. Oh, Sing Sing, will he never give up? You must be careful, pretty bird. Stay away <laughs> from Abdul. I don't trust him so close to you. Now go! Reload. That mess up. The little bird returns to her branch without... Hmm. What do I have to do here differently? Don't have everything yet. Okay. She didn't know who the song was from. Hey, Jalo, I'm following you. This is a nice little bit. It's interesting that they actually have him animated walking her way. I'm <laughs> Jalo in back to where he's going. That's right, Kevin. Hey, uh, I'm here with uh, Jalo. Greetings, my fine furred friends. Yes, I am here with the court clown. Hey, Enchantress, good to see you. Great name, by the way. Welcome, man. Glad you could be here. I love this game too. It's uh, it's been really charming so far. It's my first time playing it, but having a lot of uh, a lot of fun with it. Beat up Jalo, take his clothes, sneak inside. All right. Let's feel that strange pulling sensation, y'all. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Welcome in. So glad to see so many first-time viewers tonight and first-time chatters. If you are new here, I'm Jess, Decap Jedi. Uh, I like to stream uh, old adventure games every Wednesday night. Uh, in real life, I am a uh, professor who studies video games. So uh, they're sort of my work and my leisure, and uh, it's always fun getting to share them with, uh, with new folks and old. So Alexander thanks for coming feels in. a strange pulling sensation. <laughs> Magic maps <laughs> got stuck to me after this day. Let's see. Hey, I have a foot. A rabbit hops about rather fearless. Hey, <laughs> is this is this morbid? Alexander doesn't want to all. Alexander, Alexander, Alexander doesn't. Oh man, look at what I've got. <laughs> Professor by day, adventure by night. I'm guessing, do I need to put my signet ring in the There's ink no well? No. Alexander shakes. Alexander shakes the ball. Hey, thank you so much, Alter Roxy, Why for the follow. Alexander want to do that? Alexander doesn't want. But Rabbit doesn't want fifth foot. Look at what I did to your brethren, Rabbit. An old abandoned hunter's lamp is hanging on one of the trees. Alexander wonders who might have hunted in these dense woods. I'll just grab it. To get to the lamp, Alexander must first cross. Well, I'm sorry, the perspective isn't entirely clear, game. Ouch! Hey, Ultraroxy, you're a professor that water too! Is hot. Outstanding! Alexander, well, welcome in. not being an expert on poisonous mushrooms, decides not to take a chance on tasting the local variety. Thank you, Enchantress. I appreciate the follow. I'm technically a political scientist by trade, but I study the most important part of politics. Uh, old video games. <laughs>
to do anything with the law. Mm -hmm. A pond lies across the path. The water boils as if over some magical flame. Listen here, pond. I wish to pass. The pond, rather hot-headedly, refuses to respond. <laughs> yeah, no, that was good. That was good Alex work. You can tell that's that uh, royal privilege creeping in. <laughs> yeah, you'd like to speak. That's exactly right, Enchantress. You'd like to speak to that pond's manager, if at all possible. Actually, I want, I want that line read again. That's pretty good. <laughs> Listen here, pond. I wish to pass. The pond, rather hot-headedly, <laughs> refuses to respond. Listen here, pond. Listen here, pond. The pond. Sorry, that's really good. <laughs> oh. Alexander. P Listen here, pond. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Yep. Oh, no. Alexander notices an unusually large coal black feather lying on the beach. Yeah, you know, it's interesting coming from Gabriel Knight first, Cobra Commander, over to this one. I feel like I can pick up on a little bit. Like, you can see how much the writing has changed from when Roberta was working on it solo. And I feel like the much richer descriptions are really reflective of Jane Jensen. Like, I can totally imagine the Gabriel Knight. <laughs> narrator reading most of these alexander feels a strange pulling sensation alexander notices an unusual the alexander brooding romance Jackson. yeah dark and moody by king's quest standards absolutely alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideous oh. strong skunk-like oh. for a moment he can smell nothing else a hideous skunk-like odor, you say? Alexander oh, well, well, well. pulls out his magic map. Well, 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 well. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. This is Alan, the first screen has five dollars, so I have to get it next time I come back. Hey, Lindus, thank you so much for the, uh, for the, um... For the follow there, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I'll just stroll onto this Alexander island. Alexander hears someone coming. Thank you, Disclude. Wow, a lot of follows, Nut. Thank you so much. You all are too kind. Five fierce guards of the Isle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he, with ears and nose, tongue, hands, and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man it dies. Enchantress, I'm trying to figure it out for a moment, but Chad hasn't been helping me along a lot, so I can't take all the credit. Here's a stink flower. Alexander holds the flower of These guys are very weird, right? The jumbo nose. Tom Troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. <laughs> Listen, hark you, Grovenor. Do your duty as you Ah, oh, no. Your ears, please tell us more. Five senses, guys. Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. Yeah, it has really good voice acting so far. I agree.
Hey, Snowy P. Good to see you. Welcome, man. A nose is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. <laughs> this is cute. Taste grump trump that we might know whether the friend or whether foe. Take this mint, weirdo. Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. Frump frump is... Yeah. I like this guy. Frump frump knows a tasty treat. It matters not what others bleat. No what? danger is this one so sweet. Trilly dilly, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? Uh, it's a man. Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Be all you mad? What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare does not at all taste sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. <laughs> Weirdos. Old Bill Batter, never fatter. Vision can resolve this matter. Look you now and end this chatter. Look you now, eh? An eyeball guy. Hmm. So ink in his eyes. Alexander pours the contents of the empty looking ink bottle over himself. We did By it! all that's beauteous, fair, and sightly, four morons do I sleep with nightly. There's nothing there at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away. Yeah, I got lucky on that one. I got real lucky on that one. Alexander did it. He's fooled the guards. <laughs> Got lucky. Okay, I'm going to at least look around this island a little bit, and then I'm going to wind things down tonight. Oh, you can go north or east. That's good. Oh, man. What's this situation? The tail end of this island is a riotous scramble of books, sand, and a spider's web. The tail end of... The tail end of this. Excuse me, does anyone here know Queen Beatrice? I, my father is friends with her. She is a fellow royal like me. Does anyone here uh, know, know Queen Beatrice or maybe King Antony? Please. Alexander. I'm, I'm very rich and also a king. Little prince. Mm, wow. Hi, gorgeous. What a luscious looking hunk of flesh you are. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. I guess. This is great. Who are you? <gasps> oh, I'm a sexy you spider. I not to know. I'm Black Widow, of course. The femme fatale of all femme fatales. Know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was just... Now, if a spider said wink wink, wouldn't it be actually like 16 winks total? I'm just trying to do the math here. Thinking it was time I found my 50th, uh, another husband. It would be quite a horror. Uh, I mean, an honor to have me as a bride. <laughs> eight legs, eight just legs. look at my beautiful weaving. It's so light, so delicate. You'll never want to leave my little nest. <laughs> it is a lovely web, but my heart is elsewhere, I'm afraid. Oh, drat! Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the loss is yours. I'm sure you'll change your mind once you consider the advantages. Ma'am. A black widow is sitting in her web. She has long legs and an hourglass on her belly. She gives Alexander a knowing look. 
classic hourglass figure. An intricately detailed spider's web has been spun between a pile of books and a small tree. It's great. How's the spider give a knowing look? I don't want to see that, Paul. That's a really great question. Like, I feel like a spider trying to emote to me in any way would be the most terrifying thing imaginable. Milkweed thrives near the mucky swamp. Small bottles filled with milk That's grow on cute. it. The milkweed. Alexander takes a bottle of milk from the milkweed bush. Oh, dogwood tree? Apparently, the dogwood tree doesn't like Alexander standing that close. Swamp, let me pass. The swamp gurgles an inaudible reply. My dear tree, is it true that your bark is worse than your bite? The fallen log has a good size not on the log. bump. That bump on the log does not look particularly conversational to Alexander. The bump on the log does not. Bump on the log is very good. Wait. Yuck. I see a cool stick guy. A stick is stuck in the stick middle in the mud. of the swamp. It's a stick in the mud. Alexander sees no point in trying to talk to that stick in the swamp. It's so clearly a character. Hey, it's this scene. Boy, this was all over the promotional stuff for Keys Quest VI. They were very fond of this screen. Unless Alexander is mistaken, those plants must be baby's tears. Never worn. Hello. Aren't you a bunch of fine-looking young plants? It is a very good scene. Go, go, get ya! Apparently, the baby's tears haven't learned to talk yet. So update, uh, for those of you who have been here since the beginning of the stream, uh, it's now 11.47 p.m. my time. My daughter is away at her very first sleepover at her friend's house, her best friend's house, and uh, still no call. So she might actually make it through the night. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very exciting. I've been prepared this entire time to have to go get her. Now granted, I could walk down there and back and like, Eight minutes. It's just down the street. <laughs> hey, this clue. She's making it. Very proud of her. Vines of sweet ripening tomatoes climb up little wooden posts. As we were leaving, Pete, like we dropped her off and pizza was just arriving. I wasn't sure what the etiquette for just like asking if I can stick around for pizza was. So I left without it and I've regretted it all night long. Good day, tomato vines. Good morning. I like that Alexander's just rolling with all this. He's like, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Nothing strange here. <laughs> Those are going to be snapdragons, aren't they? A colorful array of snapdragons stand guard to one side of the path. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alexander has canonically seen things. This is a really good point, Cobra Commander. <laughs> good day, snapdragons. The snapdragons don't seem inclined to communicate with anyone. You know, these, uh, my daughter will watch me play newer games sometimes. The older ones don't excite her quite as much. I will say when she was a baby, like a baby baby, like we're talking less than six months old, um, she used to love seeing on my lap and watching the introductory cutscene from Sam and Max Hit the Road. Lucas Arts game. So I would just put that on and we would watch the bit with the mad scientist and Sam and Max showing up and crashing through the wall in their DeSoto and then cutting to the credits. And then, uh, <laughs> thanks, Winter. Thanks for dropping by. Have a great evening. Uh, we would just watch that and then reload and, uh, and then watch it again. Uh, sometimes for like an hour straight. Friends? We've only gone out to. <laughs> Alexander's voice just bounces off the wall. Greetings, ladies. How charming you look today. <laughs> Alexander's got uh, got game. To Alexander. 
An elegant padded chair provides a cushy seat from... Well, sure. Alexander would love to sit a spell, but he's a tad busy. There appears to be a hole in the garden wall. Through That's the neat. hole in the wall, Alexander sees a land that resembles a giant chessboard. Wow, it really is a hole in the wall. <laughs> What's happening? Zounds. Those Zounds. flowers sure are shy, and the snapdragons are awfully protective of them. Alexander can't even get close to the wallflowers without causing quite a stir. Mm. Zounds. I once read that Zounds is a contraction for the phrase uh, God's Wounds. But I don't know if that is actually true or just something ridiculous. A curiously speckled gate marks one end of the garden. Okay. You know what? This is probably the perfect place for me to pause tonight. Uh, I have been enjoying this a lot. This has been super fun. And I can't wait to play more of it. The only problem is... Um, I'm getting sleepy now. Uh, if I were to sleep over, I'd be wanting to go home right now. And uh, two, um, I'm not going to get to play it again next week. I'm out of town on a trip. I'm going to Yellowstone National Park. I'm very excited about that. So Retro Adventure Wednesday will be off next week, but we'll be ba blah, 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 be back two weeks from tonight. Uh, at its usual time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, so... Um, be sure to tune back in a couple of weeks. I hope you can make it back, especially all those of you dropped in for the first time tonight. Thank you. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the chats. If you were lurking out there, I appreciate that too. Uh, this was a real pleasure to play. I had an absolute blast, and I hope that y'all had fun too. Let's see here. Before we call it quits, goodness gracious, uh, we should raid somewhere, share the love a little bit. Let me see who is online goodness gracious where should we raid let's raid over um and say hey to um tawi uh she's one of my favorite streamers uh she is playing tonight uh zelda ocarina of time uh which is a game i need to play at some point and let's raid over and say hey to her uh thank you so much for the follow blob thank you all again Oh, Grundy, I'll get you in that Hall of Fame as soon as the stream ends. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for hanging out and watching. Let's see. I'll get that raid going. Uh, this was a great time. I'm glad I'm finally playing King's Quest Six, y'all. Thanks for hanging out, and have a good week or so. I'll see you again very soon.